Hello class, I'm going to go over the drip irrigation design activity that you see in this week's modules. Uh, the first thing you're going to do is open that module up and um, I'm currently creating the screen capture so that will be there to assist you. Um, you have a student irrigation design that you're going to work on and you have a legend attached. I'm going to show you each one of those. If you click on here, your design will come up. I brought this open in Paint Artist so I can show you. And then all of these symbols are shown here when you click on the legend. Here's the legend. Here's some hardscape features and then some plant material. You don't need to get overly concerned about the plant material. All I want you to do is start grouping things together like the trees, um, the shrubs, things that would be about the same water requirements. Uh, as I mentioned in class, each of these could have um, water requirements so specific that you would require a zone for each one of those. Or it could be so basic that you water all of these on one zone, which is not appropriate either. So we're gonna kinda hit the middle based on location and types of plants. So the fruit trees, the Siouxland poplars are definitely um, high duration uh, and infrequent watering so they need to be on their own uh, system. Maybe the shrubs would fall under the category boxwoods, junipers, Rose of Sharon, trailing rosemary, regal mist, or angelita daisy. These two last are pretty small and pretty drought tolerant. So is trailing rosemary. So you could possibly put those three on one um, on one valve and you could put the other shrubs on another valve. That, that combined with the seasonal flowers gives you uh, between somewhere in the neighborhood of three to five valves depending on how carried away you get. No two people will do this the same and I'm leaving that open for you to decide. I did want to note the southern live oak here is a tree goes with um, the Siouxland poplar and the fruit trees. That's all you need to know for those. We can get into later in the semester how much water these would take um, and some uh, rules about um, how much water they need at different times of the year. Right now we're just grouping them based on their need, uh, depth and location, depth of rooting and their location. All right, so when we go to the legend again, I opened it up here in paint. And what I did was I selected red to do my first valve. Here's the water source here. And so I'm gonna get the trees. Here's the southern live oak, here's the apple trees, and here's the poplars. So from this zone, and I mentioned some people wanna come very straight line. However, I'm more informal and poly lines can, can bend. And I just guess I'm gonna assume I'm gonna trench these by hand. So I'm gonna go with the bendy curved line. So maybe it goes here. Maybe it goes here, oops, it goes here. And then when you get to the end of the line, you make this flushing end cap symbol. This shows that the line ends there. Here I would T over, do something, maybe I would make a T here and come over, do something like this, something like this, and maybe keep coming on down to the live oak. So now this would be half inch polyline. From there, I could make this um, smaller because I'm showing the quarter inch line. So this tree's drip line is all the way around here. So coming off of this line, you would have emitters to the drip line. And if you made that perfect, maybe there's five, so I would do five to the outside of this one as well. The tree's roots would be out here at the perimeter. So these are quarter inch polylines or called spaghetti lines. This isn't perfect, but we're just trying to get drips out to the outside. Apple trees are a little smaller, so maybe I'm gonna do one to each side, maybe I'm gonna do three. You just go around, do that to the perimeter. And then you would want to note what you are doing for emitters. So 
I'll go with a larger size here, um, same color, choose a different, I'll put an emitter on the end here, on the end here, on the end here, on the end here, that's a little small, sorry, emitter, emitter, it looks like a spray, but that's showing my emitters. You go through this, you do the whole thing, and the way you think about this is these trees have five emitters. If I was to say um, this is a two gallon per hour emitter, when I do the budget, I would count up how many two gallon per hour emitters. If I have five two gallon per hour emitters, that's 10 gallons per hour. If I later found out that this poplar tree needs uh, 40 gallons of water per week, you could know how many hours you would have to run that by, by knowing that there's five two gallon per hour emitters, so every hour it runs, it puts out 10 gallons of water. If you were gonna run it for four hours, that would give you 40 gallons of water to the drip line of this tree. And then scale your way down. These little Angelita daisies and these little grasses probably need one to two gallons of water per week. And then everything else is in between there somewhere. And so for the next one, you would just choose the next, um, the next color, make another valve here, the valve symbol, and then you would just start going through to the ground covers. Maybe you're going to come up here, make a flushing cap at the end, come down, out to this mound, and then the same thing. You would, you would select your spaghetti emitters, run it over to each of these smaller shrubs. Maybe these larger shrubs are going to get two. With spaghetti tubing, again, put the emitters on the edge. That's all I want you to do. Once you get it designed out, don't worry about it being absolutely perfect. Just design it out. And then next week, I'm going to invite you to do a budget. If you haven't got this done yet this week, um, go ahead and finish it up and do your budget at the same time. All right. Thank you, guys.